Okay, uh, and now welcome Dr. Levy to the stage, who's here to talk about the SCL4 Summit and the TCCOE, and give us an overview. Thanks very much. All right. Um, thanks, guys. I have good piece of, one piece of good news. I'm the only thing standing between you and the panel, so that's good news. And I have very few slides, so it should take no more than two hours tops. Okay, so I'm, I'm Dr. Levy, um, and... Um, this talk is would work better if I actually had the way to change the slides. There you go. Um, this talk has nothing to do with uh, uh, you know the computer science. It's more a history channel uh, of uh, the summits and the story of SEL4 and its adoption in the United States. Uh, so this is the first summit that's been organized by the SL4 Foundation because before the SL4 Foundation did not exist, but SL4 did exist. And it inspired a lot of work back in the United States, a lot of interest. Uh, so, you know, it all started with uh, the funding agency in the United States getting an interest on this capability and then helping develop some of, uh, of the SL4 capabilities through funding and seeing this grow. So they were looking at this as an alternative because forever we have been doing the four variable tests, like Boyd was saying, and uh, trying to know that our unit tests were valid and uh, hoping that we will be smarter than the hackers and the cat. So the game has to change. That was known. So when SL4 showed up, they were very, very interested and they uh, approach us because we were using it for the uh, for the Air Force. So DARPA approached us and said, you know, we need to gel this community around the United States. We're not that many. We need to have these people together so that we can actually have the strength in numbers. So they approached us and they asked us if we actually would organize a summit. It all started with a summit. So we actually organized three of them, right? Uh, the first two were in the Washington area and then COVID strike and it was hell to organize anything, as you guys know. But what we did is uh, we wanted to make that more popular in the United States. We want to be sure that people would have access and would know where the resources were instead of trying to find them, mine them over the internet. So we use our experience in organizing IEEE meetings before and we created this common structure we would have some basis of training we would actually have some keynotes to get the juices flowing get the people in the mood we have some stories but the whole notion was to give more than enough time for people to interact because we're still building the community we're not there right you go to rsa you have 2500 people that's a big community we have 100 plus around the world. We're not big yet. We should have been, but we're not there yet, right? So that was the whole intention. So social network is very important and we needed to do. So what we did is for every one of the summits, we had this goal, underlying goal on what we wanted to do. So the first one was basically to introduce the whole SEL4 and the whole notion of verified kernel and microkernel to as many people as we can drag upon, right? So even the funding agencies help us to actually convince people to come and see what's this about, right? And so the focus of this was basically introduction. We wanted to have, um, for, for people that were developing systems for the US government mostly, but in the United States in general, to know that there's a different way to do things and there's a different approach to do things. The second summit was like we already had the core community building stuff that knew each other. So now we wanted to open this beyond. We wanted them to have access to the tools that we have been developing before, at least some of them. And we wanted to make it broader. So the second theme was to broaden that up, right? On the third summit, it was virtual. It was crazy to implement was extremely complex to pull this together because it was right in the beginning and we didn't know if uh, the pandemic would last, if it was not going to last, are you going to be able to have it or not? So it was very complicated, but the notion was no more on trying to reach out above and beyond 
Now we wanted to, for those we were already on the community, to have a chance to cross-pollinate and discuss the technologies. Also because networking was almost impossible. It had to be virtual. So we had to change our plans. Bringing someone that didn't know about this into a virtual meeting was very hard because it was difficult to convince people even to join, right? So we took a, 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 a slightly different approach and we tried to be sure that people knew what each other were doing. And that was the third one. That was our first virtual uh, meeting. So after that, great, the foundation was formed, right? So we had this com international community now getting together and building this capability. What about that little community that we built in the United States, right? Well, we start adjusting our own focus into trusted computing systems. Of course, SCL4 is a core part of this capability, right? But there are other things that you need for a real trusted system. For example, you need trusted boot. You need to know that your hardware can perform trusted operations, that you don't have that, the kind of issues that we're raising here and we discussed about it. So what we did with the community that we have in the United States, it, we, we changed it into what now we call TCCOE, the Trusted, community, the Trusted Computing Center of Excellence, right? So we are broadening the scope, but at the same time, this is pretty much a United States meeting, meaning that the, the code that we release, it's released for US citizens. If it can be released beyond that, depends on permissions of the US government, because there is this issue as well. Um, there are specific laws of technology transition in the United States uh, about how you can actually get uh, contributions. So for any company that's developing stuff on SCL4, since it's related with cyber and related with uh, security systems, uh, there are specific mandates of how you actually can transition this technology. So for us to feel comfortable to donate parts of what we did to the bigger community of the foundation, um, we have to have this buffer, this legal buffer that allows us to release, you know, we're giving it back to the community of Americans. And then we, this entity can request to, to the government of the United States if they can give beyond this community. This actually frees up the companies of the legal issues of, of contributing to the open source, which has been a big issue for Linux. Okay, so th this entity now, which has been uh, formally structured since um, March, I believe, March or April, originally we had this organizing committee, which we're trying to figure out how to create the legalities of this, the the whole the contracts i'm sure you guys went through the the whole thing to 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 create that for the foundation as well but we're dealing with uh, all the american laws and all the needs so this was the the original group that was organizing the tccoe and just past this february we had our first summit now this summit was different than the others because it was not solely centered on SCL4. It was broadened in the terms that it included technologies that were directed towards uh, trusted computing in general. So you had different panels with different topics, even though SCL4 did dominate the topic. I have to be honest, right? Um, but you can see that the keynotes from the keynotes listening here, you already have more of a mixed security platform. We're talking about how we actually transition this. So the, the, the meetings here and the presentations you can see there have, uh, um, those are the ones which are SL4 related mostly. Uh, they have this tone about how we actually push this into the industry and utilization in the United States. It was way more focused onto this. So you can see here that the TCOE the CCOE and, and the foundation, they coexist and they collaborate, but they don't have the exact same agenda, right? They are not the same entity at all, or even overlap more than specific overlapping on the interest on SEL4 as a technology. The panels as well, you can see that we're discussing gaps and needs and proof assurance. This was actually beyond SEL4. 
this discussion actually involved other technologies, what else you need to actually develop a secure uh, uh, capability into systems, right? So I'm sorry, uh, PowerPoint ate my slide four. Um, and, but uh, I'm happy to, to tell you that neither PowerPoint or Teams were made with embedded systems technology or SL4 technology. So you can see that uh, since we're actually trying to push this technology across and be more practical and more pragmatic how you actually build systems, we had more tutorials on the CCOE, but that was also virtual. It was a virtual meeting as well because we're still under COVID around February. Nobody was feeling really safe to, to be around much. Okay. Like I said, uh, since April, the TCCOE is a uh, non-governmental nonprofit. Uh, it stands on its own, uh, and it's a membership-only uh, system in which the companies sign in, and they donate the time of their members to do the work for the TCCOE. Uh, I'm here uh, because Jason and Ray asked for I had I was the guy with the ticket to Germany. So I came to talk, but uh, I know, so Blue Halo is actually donating my time into this effort. No one in the CCOE receives to work. It's all member only, just like, uh, um, you know, many open source work. Uh, these are the fellows that are actually the current um, managing executives of the CCOE. Uh, there is a board. Uh, the foundation does have a, a member on the board. So does the U.S. government. Um, by our status, they don't vote, but they do opinate. Uh, and so that keep us uh, true to form uh, on our interests. And we also create committees in order to control our the flow of our work. It's all voluntary work. Um, now, what did we learn on the passage of those summits and everything else that uh, we did in this effort to spread secure, uh, trusted computing into the United States? First, all the, the research is really fun, but at the end, like Boyd was saying, has to be easy to use, has to be easy to test, has to be practical to use, because there are just not enough formal methods people around the world to actually do all the embedded systems. We're never going to get to scale if we don't simplify the usage of it. Um, there, there needs to be synergy between academia and industry because we're going to solve the problems okay and the government is the one who creates the problems for us to solve but uh so this uh this working between government industry and academia is necessary to create the amount of momentum that we need in order to clean up so much heritage wrong code living around there's no other way to put it you know um like i said there is still a lot that we need to 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 figure it out there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of needs out there. Um, I love the notion of a world domination, but it takes a whole lot more. So the question is how we actually divide and conquer this world domination for trusted computing, right? How we actually slice this and go after it on a sustainable matter that we can actually go. So there's a, 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 a big lessons learned on that that we have to know our pace and know what we're going after. Now, what's the way forward? And that's my last slide, thank you. Uh, the way forward here is that this community has to work together internationally and inside United States, we have the same challenge. We have an extra step than anybody else uh, that I know, but I'm sure all the countries have their own restrictions on technology transmission. Um, and because we're a small community that understands the need, it, that's what he was saying. You know, you can't convince them that that's not needed anymore, that uh, your, your, your steps are no longer needed for validation because we are doing formal validation. We are way ahead of what you're asking, but the industry would take long. Why? Why the car industry is so resistant? Safety, right? They're the ones in line. So it takes a lot of education, takes a lot of nurturing, takes a, a creating the tool so that it's easy to do, right? Takes teaching, takes training. So this will be our truth for the foreseeable future, right? Now, again, uh, I want to point out at the end that the DCCOE is about trusted computing platforms. 
trust and computing capabilities, right? Today, the only verified microkernel is SEL4. Tomorrow, that might not be the truth because like Gernel himself was saying, you've got to keep swimming, you've got to keep pushing because there is competition coming about, right? The DCCOE will look at all technologies. We'll try to get the most of the technologies available for US implementers. We have one solid rule. Whatever is shared, is shared without licensing. If the work to be done by the American companies is for the US government. Now, you're, you can share on the TCCOE without licenses for the work for the US government, and if somebody wants to use it in a commercial version, they have to pay a license. That's perfectly all right. But the open source that's shared at the TCCOE, it's always without license for the US government. West government, regardless who is the company doing. And that's the one golden rule of the TCCOE. So everything that you share becomes public domain for US companies if they're working for the, for the US government. Why? Because the US government paid a lot of money to create this technology and to support this technology in the United States and support the TCCOE itself. So it makes sense that they're going to have their dollar back. And we're here to help fostering the community on SEL4 because we're fostering our main goal, which is developing trust systems and the understanding of the final customer that the game has to change. And this is it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, are there any questions? Sure. Uh, you have to stand up. It had to be you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Greg Wilds from Dornerworks. Uh, so Renato, maybe it would be helpful for the audience to tie, talk about how the TCCOE connects or keeps that connectivity with the foundation. Sure. Um, I don't have a slide here for this, but basically we have defined from the beginning uh, a Venn diagram, basically, of uh, mutual interests between the TCCOE and the foundation and the kind of stuff that we would not do. Uh, for example, we would not, um, you know, use known official releases of the SEL4. What we're doing and we're mirroring our site, for example, are literally photographs of the official release and we dated when that release was done. Uh, it's just there so that it's, it's freezing in space, it's freezing in time so that we know and we verify that all, everything that builds there builds correctly, executes correctly. Uh, we need that for consistency. So, um, uh, for example, our, 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 our US, own, US citizens only site has like several dates in which we froze the Git and we got their version and we dated and we tested so that uh, when someone releases something, on our own site, we can verify against the kernels that they are working or not. And uh, so this uh, uh, compromise with the SL4 Foundation, how we're going to work together, uh, even though we don't have conflicting interests, but we have different agendas. Uh, that was uh, 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 agreed upon, and we, that's one of the reasons why we have uh, um, a representative of the SL4 Foundation with, with the, the governing board. You know, it was agreed upon from the beginning before even the DCCOE or the foundation, as a matter of fact, was what was a reality. Okay, if there are no more questions, I think we have a panel discussion next. Um, thanks very much, Dr. Levy. <laughs>